Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue talking about the Synology Router Range. It's part of our three-part series where we are going back and looking at the Synology routers, the RT1900C, the RT2600AC and the MR2200AC and seeing in 2021 if they're still worth your money and your data. Today we're doing another 5x5. Five five. We're going to talk about five reasons why in 2021 you should still consider buying them and five reasons why you might want to give them a miss. And in today's video we can't ignore the fact that one, these are devices that arrive with pretty much most of the price tag going towards software so there's going to be a huge focus on software and two, the idea that these systems Kind of the last bit of hardware for routers that Synology brought out it was 2019, early 2019. And now in 2021, although they have updated the firmware and the software and all of the features very, very much, uh, very well, uh, version 1.2.4, I believe, uh, at the time of recording, it has to be said that there will be a lot of focus on the software. So do bear that in mind. So reason number one that you may want to go for a Synology router in 2021 is the user control. I have tested a lot of routers, from mobile routers on the road to desktop mesh and more, and I have never seen software that allows you to control uh, uh, the overall arching schedule of your connected devices, family members, co work colleagues, and more in such a user-friendly fashion. From the ability to assign profiles where you add people's devices via their MAC addresses and then assign them privileges and access across the blanket of their devices in about three clicks, it is a tremendously useful and powerful tool. And when it comes to enjoying your network but making sure things are secure for your friends and family, be they your kids, relatives, or employees, Genuinely, the user account control available to you in SRM on these devices is second to none, and nothing I have seen on any other router in the last few years has ever come even close. Reason number two that you may want to go for a Synology router in 2021 is two things, Google Safe Search and WPA3. Now, on their own, they do seem a bit independent. Synology didn't come up with WPA3, and they certainly didn't come up with Google Safe Search, but you would be very, very surprised to see how few routers been released since 2019 that are prosumer grade that have access to Google's safe search um, background information, the blacklist, the whitelist, and ultimately a more automated and easy access control panel of making sure some sites can and cannot be visited by individual users. Of course, you can do it custom, you can do it yourself and add and remove URLs and sites manually, but having the Google safe search index is incredibly useful to not have to think and analyze every single URL that are being accessed by your employees or your family members. And with WPA3, that is by far the better Wi-Fi protocol in terms of efficiency and not lessening throughput of data while still maintaining security. So many routers released in 2020, 2021 did not include WPA3, peaking at WPA, uh, WPA2. Now, WPA2 is great, it's still very, very good, and it's still very, very functional and useful indeed. It followed up from a near decade old protocol that came before it, but the latest security there in terms of Wi-Fi strength, efficiency, and security cannot be underestimated there. And the idea that this device here, the mesh version came out in 2019 at the beginning of the year and still includes it and a lot don't since then is pretty shocking. Reason number three that you might want to go for the Synology system, and again, I'm gonna look a lot more at mesh systems here, but it does cover pretty much the whole Synology router range, is the fact that none of their services are, with the exception of VPN, we can touch on later, do not require subscription payments. So, so many router providers, mesh and otherwise, hide a lot of parental control, they hide a lot of automated controls and settings behind subscription paywalls. Five, eight, ten or a month, it's not much, is it? Once you do that over a year or two, that's a lot of money. And although these are a little pricey, something I will talk about later on, not having that subscription service. Do you remember last, uh, back in 2019 when we compared it against Google Wi-Fi, against the TP link, um, uh, the Deco systems, the Linksys and more? Most of those services that they included what behind a paywall in some uh, in a lot of cases and certainly the parental control which i think is a bit manipulative reason number four that you might want 
to go for a Synology router system in 2021 is because of the analytics. The amount of information that is presented to you in an informative yet user-friendly manner in reports and on the fly for a client browser, desktop windows, and the mobile app DS router is just fantastic. And if you are a network junkie, if you are someone that really likes to read through all the stats, you will absolutely love the analytical information available to you and the customization in those reports as well as in the control panel to create a really bespoke SSID and all the stuff around it, oh, it's just fantastic. And I cannot recommend it enough than going through those analytics to see that it can be broken down by a profile user and those individual profiles and how much internet access you give them or reward them or remove and how it is based on that analytical report to give you a fuller picture of your network cannot be understated. And I'm really impressed by it even now, two years after its release. Reason number five that you may want to go for a Synology router, mesh or otherwise, and something that they don't really sing very loudly about, at least not till recently, is that you can connect and tether an existing internet network. You don't need to rely on just the WAN port on the rear of these devices. You can, if you choose, utilize a mobile phone and connect it via USB directly into the mesh router hub uh, mesh router satellite or into the larger prosumer router like the RT2600 and use the internet from this in your router network. Have it as a failover or as a live connection and that extends to using mobile routers as well that have USB ports like this D-Link that all when I've utilized the Netgear in the past connect it directly into the router and then you use that internet connectivity there. Again failover or your main active connection when you're on the go or when you're um, um, uh, staying in one place can't be understated it's an incredibly useful feature built into all of their systems that is weirdly absent on a number of routers and that includes using usb um, mobile dongles as well that have a sim card inside you can stick one inside here boom use that internet connection and all the software that includes uh, that is included with your synology router but <clears throat> These router systems aren't for everyone. Of course, with all the good, unfortunately, there has to be a little bit of bad for some, some of you out there. So now we're gonna go through the five reasons why you might not wanna go for one of these. Reason number one, for a router that comes from a NAS brand and a, a system that has a USB port on the rear, there are surprisingly few applications from Synology that are included with this. There's download station, which is good. There's a file station access there, but that's really it. You can't do much more of the, many of the applications available from DSM. Now this utilizing utilizes a much lesser Qualcomm processor inside an SOC software on chip for managing the network. But still, I kind of would have liked to see a number of features and functionality from Synology's DSM platform be available on this device. They're trading on the brand after all. You can look at the Netgear Nighthawk series, which allows you to install Plex Media Server on board. It seems kind of a shame to me that you can't take advantage of a number of those different apps that Synology boast about. Maybe not things like surveillance or VMs, that would be ludicrous. But photo, video and music station, maybe moments. It's a real shame you can't take advantage of those on their router platform. Reason number two, that you may not want to go for a Synology router in 2021 as it stands. This is being recorded in April 2021. They're only available in Wi-Fi 5. That is uh, Wi-Fi A, C, and N. Now, they're fine. A lot of devices people have are still that protocol. But in the last 18 months to two years, we have seen a lot of Wi-Fi 6 devices arrive on uh, on the market. 802.118x, the new and more um, high performance um, protocol, uh, that's Wi-Fi 8x or Wi-Fi 6, is becoming more readily available on mobile phones, it's being available on laptops, it's been available on lots of client devices, including the latest generation of consoles, like the PS5. With that, that Wi-Fi protocol can actually be faster than LAN connectivity via a wire. So if you check the devices in your hardware environment and you suddenly see they're all Wi-Fi 6, this will be a bottleneck here 
for you. Now, maybe the next gen that we'll talk about in a bit and go into a bit more detail about may include Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 6E for that matter, but these most certainly don't, and that might be a reason to not go for them. Reason number three, that you might not go for a Synology router in 2021, they're one gigabit ethernet. And I know I sound like a broken record here, but Synology will persist with one gigabit ethernet on their devices, whether they be NAS or routers at the moment. And it's just a lot of you out there want their data bigger and faster. And one GBE just feels a bit underwhelming. It feels like a bottleneck. Now, a number of you may argue successfully, I might add, that you can't really, with regards to the internet, get higher than one GBE. How many of us have got internet connections that are higher than a gigabit? You know, you have to really try, not a lot of places have plus one gigabit internet connectivity in home or business environments. And therefore the 100 to 109 megabytes per second that this device can put out on LAN should be more than sufficient. And I agree, but their router system, their mesh system, this device has two LANs on board. There is an element of switch connectivity with these devices that's important. A number of you are utilizing the Synology router system for its network capabilities, not just the internet. And that's where higher than one GBE is important. I'm not just saying leap to 10 gigabit ethernet, although to be fair, QNAP did do that on the QHORA. I'm saying maybe add some 2.5G, a single port, as we have seen from TP-Link, as we've seen from Asus, as we've seen from a number of places, we have seen people use those higher LAN capabilities on their routers. And it's just something that's not present in this 2019 generation of hardware. Reason number four, that you may not go for these, and this is probably the most obvious, I probably should have put this at the top, the price tag. Hardware for hardware, the Synology router system, be they the prosumer standalone or mesh systems, they cost more than everyone else, about 20% in some places. That's a big jump, and they look at the cost of these routers and go, that's pretty pricey, my ISP router was free. Not a good comparison. But even if you move away, and again, you look at your TP-Link, your D-Link, your Google, uh, that new Amazon One Eero, or whatever it's called, all of those, they are cheaper overall. And that's because the Synology, as mentioned at the top of the video, factors in SRM, it factors in the software into the pricing there. So if you're not gonna use that software, you're gonna be spending a lot of money, and therefore the price tag of the Synology Route system may put you off. And the fifth and final reason that you may not want to go for a Synology Route, and again, this one's pretty obvious, it's 2019, the last one came out. There may be new stuff on the way. There may be a Wi-Fi 6 router on the way. There may be a 2.5 5G or 10G router on the way. An MR2200AX, an RT, 3200AX or 3000 or 3200. The band frequencies change quite significantly on the different channels that are available, but still nonetheless, the point still remains. We've not seen a new release in this series since 2019 at the start of that year. So there's every possibility that a new one may be arriving. And if you invest in these now, you may feel like you're missing out on what's coming in the future. I'm sure they're gonna be backwards compatible to a degree, via the backhaul, via the mesh, whatever. But still, nonetheless, a number of you may not want to take the plunge on these because you're holding out for the greater gigabit ethernet, you're holding out for a better Qualcomm processor or more memory, you're holding out for Wi-Fi 6 or 6E. But that has been five reasons that you may want to buy the Synology Root Systems and five reasons you might not. Thank you so much for watching. We are gonna continue talking about network devices, mobile routers, mobile tethering, and these throughout the course of the next month or so. So if you wanna learn about those and choose the right solution for you, click subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, help me know that that's the case and click like. Otherwise, visit the links in the description to all of the resources I talked about today, as well as lots of information and guides. I will see you next time.